the Lord. Let somebody say Womu Womu. Let somebody say Womu Womu. Every power in your life. Every demon around this place. Familiar spirits and every plant that my father in heaven has not planted in our lives. Eh? Hallelujah. So this morning we are singing Wumu Wumu, and God is going to destroy every power in our lives that are working against our future, working against our progress in the name of Jesus. Wum wum la wo, kwata kwata fatu, ege to luwa ubi, wum wum la wo. Igetolu wa ubi, wong wong, fa 
Atu, Pasa Pasa, Aojo, Rao Rao, Igitolua Urbe, Wong Wong, Fatu, Pasa Pasa, Aojo, Rao Rao, Wong Wong La Wong, Pasa Pasa Fatu, Igitolua Urbe, Wong Wong La Wong, Wong Wong La Wong, Pasa Pasa Fatu. Igitoluwa ube, wong wong la wo. for coming to our state. I was sharing with some people that we are blessed in Ondo State. We have been hearing about daddy all over the Federation, indeed all over the world, especially about this global crusade. Now that is our turn, and we have seen God's blessing every night, the Lord has been stretching for his hand mightily to raw salvation, and also to heal and to deliver. It's my prayer that the Lord will uphold you for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody can actually introduce our daddy uh, because he's a man of God, well known all over the world. And apart from that, he has been a defender of the faith. Uh, and he has been consistent all, all over these years. By the grace of God, I came across this ministry in 1979, and he has so many children, both inside a deeper life and outside a deeper life. By the grace of God, I'm one of them. Amen. And we have been following him. One thing I really admire as a person is that he has been consistent. With the message of holiness. He has been consistent for more than five decades. He has never stopped saying, Without holiness, no man shall say the Lord. Honestly, contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saint. So I want you to join me this morning by welcoming my daddy into the podium, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumi. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord because He has brought us together once again today. And I pray the Lord will impact every life in Jesus' name. The Minister's Professional Conference that we have, we had on Friday, we're having today. And by the grace of God tomorrow, we'll conclude. One is transmitted to the whole of Nigeria. All the states, all the local governments are receiving the message. 
And so I want to plead with those who minister, like you minister in songs and other things, let's minister in English so that the people all over who are here will benefit from what we're doing. Not only that, it's transmitted to all the countries in Africa and beyond Africa. Actually, we are... minister let's be conscious of the fact that many people are outside there and they're listening to us so that will be of tremendous benefit to everyone the Lord bless you in Jesus name Amen. and today as we come we're going to look at Psalm 27 and I know that these Psalms are familiar, are familiar with them but all the same, as the Spirit of God takes us out of where we are to where we ought to be, the power, the inspiration, and the goodness of God revealed in these Psalms will come into your life and ministry in Jesus' name. Let's lift our voice to the Lord and pray. I want you to pray and say, Lord, today, everything you have for me. No, I don't mean you repeat what I'm saying. I mean that you should pray for yourself that everything God has for you today, the Lord will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. Raise up your voice and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I don't want you to come here empty-handed. I want... I want everything you've got for me to be mine today. Your personal life, your family, your ministry, God has a lot for you and he wants you to key in to everything he has provided and everything he wants to do. He answers prayer. All of us online, pray and say, Lord, today, I want to possess, I want to be a partaker of everything you have for me. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. This is the day you have made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. In Jesus' name. You've called us to the ministry. Called us to a profession. Called us for the stage and taught us. And the place in life you have put us. We're asking, oh Lord, that you support all your ministers, all your servants, all the professionals, everyone you have called.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are still ready, prepared, willing, and today you know that despite whatever, the Lord will bless you tremendously. Praise the Lord. on your people in jesus name and we pray that in our lives your name will be glorified and the work you have given us to do will prosper in jesus name all our people online everywhere i pray lord you visit everyone specially in a very unique way today in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today as we come to the ministers and professional conference, we're coming to one of the Psalms. On Friday we dealt with Psalm 23. And today we're looking at Psalm 27. Look at Psalm 27, open your Bible. Psalm 27, reading from verse 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And then it says, Of whom shall I be afraid? In verse 2, it says, When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. They will stumble. They will fall. In verse 3, it tells us, Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart Take the sailor, take the pause, meditate on what you have heard. Let's meditate on what you have heard already. That the Lord himself will lift you up. Yeah. I will make all the intention of any enemy in your life, all those intentions paralyzed in Jesus name in your life in your ministry in all your endeavors and everything you set your hand upon will prosper in Jesus name keep on meditating on the fact that what the Lord has for you what he has ordained for you he will fulfill yeah. I said he will fulfill yeah. and whatever comes in the way the Lord will open the way for you yeah. he'll open his door his door into blessing yeah. his door into all the possibilities of your life yeah. that mountain you will climb yeah. that peak you will reach there 
and the power of the Lord will take you from where you are and get you to where you will be and also ordain for you in Jesus name as a man as a woman as a professional as a minister as everyone and anyone called of God the Lord will fulfill the purpose of the call in your life in Jesus name now it tells us in verse 3 it says though an host shall encamp against me against you your heart will not fear no war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. And then it tells us in verse 4, it says in verse 4, One thing have I desired, I set my face, I set my focus, I set my face like a flint. And that one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock yeah. and then in verse 6 it tells us and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me therefore will i offer in his tabernacle the sacrifices of joy i will sing yea i will sing praises unto the Lord and then in verse 7 it says hear me O Lord when I cry when I pray when I call and when I beseech the throne of grace hear my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me and then in verse 8 it says when thou said seek ye my face my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I see. Verse 9, it says, Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. In verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Yeah. Verse 11 tells us, it says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in the plain path because of mine enemies. Verse 12, it says, Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty but Satina, i had been had fainted i would have fainted unless i believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And in your life, everything he has ordained, everything he has prophesied in your life, the goodness of the Lord, the prosperity of the Lord, and the provision of the Lord, you will not faint, you will see in Jesus' name. Then in verse 14, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart, which I say on the Lord. That's the psalm we're looking at, and I pray that the Lord grant us revelation, Amen. inspiration, Amen. instruction, 
that everything he has for us in this beautiful day he will provide in every life in in jesus name i'm talking to you from this uh, psalm on uh, the transformed partakers of his all sustaining strength strength he has to sustain you to succor you to support you and to keep you on top of the mountain all sustaining strength and then uh, the people who become the partakers they transformed partakers of his all sustaining strength we're looking at uh, three subtitles in the message today number one our great confidence in his pavilion in his secret habitation we come to him and the more we abide in him the more we stay with him the more we seek his face the more courage the more confidence and the, the more strength he gives unto us our great confidence in his pavilion in his secret habitation number two is a glorious consecration with purposeful submissive humility is glorious the glorious consecration we come to the lord and we sacrifice our praise we sacrifice everything our gift unto him and we lay everything upon the altar the glorious consecration with purposeful submissive humility number three is the good courage of prayerful strengthened hearts as we come in the presence of the lord he strengthens us in the inner man he gives us strength spiritual strength and that spiritual strength that he gives us grants us courage the courage to be the courage to do and the courage to walk in the path that he has set for us the good courage of prayerful strengthened hearts let's look at number one number one is our great confidence in his pavilion in his secret habitation there are three things we're looking at here number one we're looking at the fresh perception of salvation through conversion number two the fixed possession of strength and confidence number three the focused pursuit of servants for his cause look at number one number one the fresh perception of salvation through conversion it tells us in um, in psalm 27 reading from verse 1 in psalm 27 verse 1 it says the lord is my light and my salvation a time comes in the life of everyone that he understands he needs god not only that you need God once in a while, like you go to the restaurant to eat and you take that once in a while. No, you come to him and you want to live in his habitation and you turn away from every form of sin, transgression, iniquity and evil and you have your face in the Lord and then the Lord becomes your salvation, your savior and he saves you. He saves you from the past it saves you from your weakness it saves you from everything that weakened you and brought you down and it lifts you up and now you have a new life because you become a new creature in christ it says the lord is my light and he is my salvation whom shall I fear? Before you came to the Lord, you feared idols, you feared demons, you feared occultic power, you feared principalities and powers. But now, the highest in the universe, the most holy God, has brought you to himself. You become a child of God, and all the fears of your life, they're driven away. So you can say, the Lord is my light, and he is my salvation. He says, of whom shall I fear? The 
my Lord is the strength of my life. That he is your life. Although you might have been weak before, you were, you came to the Lord, but now you came to the Lord and he has strengthened your heart. He gave you salvation. He gave you a new life. And it says, you say, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? As we look at the Lord, number one, he is our savior. Number two, he is our strength. Is the one that strengthens us so that the journey ahead of us will go through that journey and will go through victoriously in Jesus' name. Number three, he is our circle. It's our support. It's the one that says, I'll support you. I will succor you. I will lift you up. No matter what you go through in your Christian journey, in your ministerial journey, in your professional journey, I am your salvation. I am your strength. I am your succor. He is our supply. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Your salvation, your strength, your soccer and he is your supplier he supplies everything all the strength you will need for the journey all the provision you will need for the journey he is the one who succors you number five he is our sanctifier sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth you come to him and you bring your heart already he has forgiven your sin now when we're talking about sin it's like if you picture a tree there are branches and those branches are the external sins and transgressions that we have committed at the point of salvation all those branches are cut off and so now the place is clear but the root of that tree is still there and if the root remains there without being dealt with the dew will come the rain will come sunshine will come and the vicissitudes of life will come and they come on that three they uh, the branches will come up again the thing you do to get rid of that tree completely is to uproot is to root out the roots there and when they are taken off that's like sanctification that he now roots out the very root of sin out of your life externally you are free internally you are free and you can say the lord is my sanctifier and the lord is also your substitute he has taken all the judgment that shall come upon you all the attacks you have you are about to carry he says i'll carry it for you there is somebody by your side his name is jesus savior substitute and everything you carry he will carry for you and the lord number seven is your shepherd and you never forget he is my savior he is my salvation he is my strength he is my succor he is my supplier he is my sanctifier he is my substitute and he is my shepherd and with that knowledge of God you can go on and move on and say the Lord is all in all for me he is my sufficiency and because he is my sufficiency everything will be all right look at Psalm 24 I'm reading from verse 5 in Psalm 24 verse 5 he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It's because we are saved that now righteousness comes into our lives, uprightness comes into our lives, and we're able to live the way he wants us to live. Isaiah chapter 62, I'm reading from verse 1. It says in Isaiah 62, reading from verse 1, for Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamb that boneth. Have you seen the connection between the righteousness and the salvation? The salvation and the righteousness. That the connection God makes in our lives. When we experience in a practical way the salvation 
of the Lord. How do I get that now under the new covenant? Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 9. In Romans chapter 10 verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus. And shall believe in thine heart. That God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Give me a good amen. amen. And then in verse 10, in verse 10, for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and what the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Righteousness in that verse, salvation in that verse. When we are saved, there is righteousness. When we are saved, there is the turning around of our lives that the lives we used to live we don't live that life anymore the life of unrighteousness in the past and the life of ungodliness of the past when we come to the lord and we're born again and we're saved it says there is righteousness that comes along for the salvation forward the heart man believeth unto righteousness and for the mouth confession is made unto salvation let's come to number two here number two is the fixed possession of strength and confidence it tells us in that psalm 27 reading from verse 1 it says the lord is my light no darkness on my path again because the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid? Then in verse 2 it says, When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Amen. Amen. And then in verse 3, in verse 3 it says, Though an host should encamp against me. Uh, the king uh, David now is talking about the enemy and the army of enemies. And not just one, not just one Saul against him, not just one Doeg against him, not just one Philistine against him. It says the whole camp and the whole uh, battalion of enemies, though and who should encamp against me it says my heart shall not fear why because god is my salvation because god is my strength and because god is my succor and my support and because it says god who is over all and above all more powerful than all he is on my side is my shepherd and is protecting me it says because of that my heart shall not fear actually fear comes through the heart to the rest of the body when the heart is afraid the heart first will get afraid and then it will affect your voice it will affect what you see it will be pouring out the tears of sorrow and the tears of expected suffering when the heart is afraid it affects the hand the hand is weak you cannot hold you cannot carry when the heart is afraid it affects your feet and the feet cannot run the race that is set before you it starts from the heart and so the psalmist said i not worry about my hands i not worry about the feet i not worry about any other thing i'll be concerned about my heart and he says when they rise against me actually uh, you've heard uh, you know the lion the lion comes like